Hello cybersecurity professionals, welcome to AV Cyber Active. Today's topic of discussion is going to be scene use case and its framework. I'm going to go ahead and divide this video into three parts. First one is going to be scene use case. Second is one is going to be scene use case management. And third and the last one is going to be use case framework. All right, let's get started. Now, a typical scene use case will have three major components. First one, and this is the most important one, that is the rule itself. This is basically the sum total of all the event types or the events that you want to use for your base use case uh, this is you can say the heart and soul of your use case itself second one is the logic or the parameter this is what defines how the events or the rules will be triggered or considered this can also be expressed in number of events or for a use case to trigger in a certain duration or time and the last one is what we see in your what you see in your dashboard that is the action this is what determines what action is required if the logic or the conditions are met. This was just theoretical. Uh, I'll highly recommend I've made another video that explains the SIEM architecture. I would first recommend you watch that video and serves as a good baseline or a working ground so that you can have more clarity on how SIEM as an architecture works. Now coming back to the SIEM use case, let's try to understand this with the help of an example visually. So you got your event, say for example, you get an event that is normalized as login and a subtype or a type which carries a failure. So this is where your parsers would come into picture where you would categorize the event as login and it's the type is failure. Next one is your logic. So you would want, want to trigger this rule or an event when 10 events or 10 failure events are observed within a minute. Next is the action. So what do you want to do here with the action? Do you want it to send you an alert in your dashboard? Do you want to get an email via your SMTP port 25? Or do you automatically want if a login failure of this sort happens to block the user account using an underlying API or SOAR automation tools if you want to go that, that extreme route? So this is obviously possible. Then you also want to name your use case and assign it a severity. Now once that all of that is done, what you would see is something like this, an event in your SIEM tool or your dashboard. This is your actual alert, alarm, or offense, as you might call it, in your dashboard. This is where your analysts would go ahead and pick up the event, annotate or acknowledge the alarm, and would further go ahead and investigate if it's really worth investigating, or they find it to be a false positive or a benign event. All right, so that was our SIEM use case. Next one is SIEM use case management. Now, obviously, if you're maintaining a repository of use case, it has to be maintained and updated to maintain a good security posture. For that, you would need a good use case management. And what better way to explain it using the use case management lifecycle. So there are, you see multiple stages a use case goes through to complete its cycle from right from beginning from planning to deployment. I'll try to explain each of them one by one in short. First one, and that was of course an obvious one, is to identify your data source. Windows, Linux, or IoT devices, as the case maybe so once you know what you want the next step is to think about where you can find it attacks are defined by your source from which they emerge for example your base events or syslog next one in your life cycle is to either onboard or offboard your data source so this is the start stage where you start integration of log sources into your seam uh, this could require some config changes at the source like forwarding of logs or uh, on the seam take place it may also require some changes to your file firewall rule to ensure that data source communicate with your SIEM. For example, you might want to open port 514 and protocol UDP so your SIEM connector, receiver, or your SIEM load balancers is able to receive those logs. Next in your use SIEM use case management is to design and review rule logic. So once you've had the data sources in place, it's time to look at the logs and identify what you need to detect an attack, or like your field of events. It's just also important, it's, it's also an important factor where building this logic or rule to identify and correct fields so that you can perform your proper correlation and aggregation at this step. 
Next is defining the baseline, kind of obvious. This is where your use case patterns and rules are defined so that you can define your thresholds and baseline to aggregate similar events. Most of your Seam solutions would come with some default aggregation setting. You might want to fine tune according to your own Seam and tailor it to your environment. Next one is testing and tuning. This is a defined logic and baseline in this use case needs testing. So based on the testing results, tuning will be required to ensure you can reduce your noise and concentrate on only the security event. Next one is to optimize based on your outcome. So based on the testing that you do, you should always optimize your baselines to detect an attack. Last one, monitoring the performance. Now, obviously, once you've deployed your team use case, you would want to monitor them for their performance and keep them running at optimal requirements so that the alerts generated and to keep a track of false positives and overall health of your team. So now that brings us to the end of use case management. Moving on to the last part of this video is the use case framework. Now, why would you want your use cases to follow a certain framework? This is very important. Now, ideally, you would definitely want your use cases to follow a framework because if you're defining your use case based on just the organizational requirement, you aren't doing enough. There have been plenty of researches that have been done by external third party or non-profit organizations which help contribute to the security community. Some of them are actually just two of them I'm going to list over here. I'm also going to list the links so that you can go ahead and refer them at the bottom. The first one is going to be your famous MITRE attack framework. So what is it? It's a globally accessible knowledge base of adversary tactics and techniques. Each of them has an ID and sub techniques based on the real world observation. So the attack knowledge base is used as a foundation for development of any specific threat models and methodologies in private sector or in government organizations. And of course, there's another and most heard about is the Lockheed Martin. That's the organization aim which developed the Cyber Kill Chain. So it's been developed by Cy uh, Lockheed Martin, the Cyber Kill Chain. It's a framework and it's a part of intelligence-driven defense model for identification and prevention of cyber security intrusion activity. Uh, this model identifies what the adversaries must complete in order to achieve their objective. Uh, this model usually has seven steps to it, beginning with reconnaissance, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, C2 command and control, and actions and objectives. Since the Lockheed Martin cyber kill chain is something you would hear people talk about all the time, I'll explain it a bit more. So if I was to divide the cyber kill chain into two parts, that would be the pre-attack and the enterprise attack. So basically the difference is the pre in the pre-attack stage, it's all up to the attackers and it's all still confined or limited to your perimeter or your boundary firewall. The attacker at this point of time is only doing recon or reconnaissance to gather more information about your organization and equipping itself with proper tools, which is the weaponization. It's developing those scripts so that it can further leverage the loopholes that it's found in the previous recon stage. And of course, in the enterprise attack stage, this is where it delivers the payload, it exploits it or exploits the system, it installs it on the system, it maintains persistency by establishing its connectivity to the command and control, and then it achieves its objective. The objective might differ from either doing cyber espionage or financial damage. Now, both of these use case frameworks would require a video or dedicated video of their own. Let me know if you want me to cover that as well. All right. All right. For that, I'll end this video if you are in need for any cybersecurity training or need any consultation i'll leave my email down below feel free to contact and i'll also link the important links that might help you to explore more on seam use case rule deployment and different type of seam use case frameworks now at the very least share this video with your family and friends whom you think would benefit from this video and share the knowledge all right with that i'll end the video i hope you all have a lovely day ahead. Okay, bye now.